towards the front edge of your mat, knees bent, and all you're going to do is round your spine over, let your arms hang nice and easy on your knees, so you've created a little area that you can rest your forehead, and you can close your eyes, and just pausing here for a moment and bringing your awareness into your breath. Relaxing your neck and shoulders as much as possible. A nice long, slow, deep inhales and exhales. Feeling that wonderful opening along the back of your ribs between the shoulder blades. And allowing that movement of your spine as you breathe to travel down towards your sacrum and perhaps to travel up towards your neck and your shoulders. And taking just a few moments before we start moving to pay attention to your physical body. Notice how you're feeling this morning, any areas that you may be holding on to. Taking a moment to notice how your energy is feeling. And perhaps start to notice if there is a connection or a thread linking the two. A thread between your physical body and your energetic body. Would you describe them in the same way? And taking one more deep breath in through your nose, fill your body with energy, breathe out through your mouth, and just let it yourself into the space. Start rolling up into a seated position, hooking your hands just around the front of your knees, using your arms to help yourself as you sit up nice and tall. And we're going to start rolling backwards and decide how far back you can go. If you can straighten your arms, then go for it. If you're not there yet, it doesn't matter. Just pause, take a breath, and then bend your elbows and pull yourself back up, and lifting up nice and tall. And again, curling back. Start to notice as you move your spine, that your feet are staying rooted to the ground. And if you notice that your feet are rolling out or rolling in, then maybe you need to adjust the position of your feet and legs. Maybe you need to take them a bit wider. So just figure out your placement as you slowly move through your spine. Let's take one more time, rolling halfway back, just Pause, enjoy that little stretch wherever you are. And then exhale, roll forward, lifting all the way up and tall. And now bring both arms out in front of you. We're going to go all the way down onto our backs. So using your breath, if you need to hold your hands behind your thighs, then go for it. Lie flat and just bringing the arms all the way in. Now walk your feet a little bit closer. You're still gonna have your feet and knees slightly apart. And again, you pause for a moment and make sure that your feet are grounded. Do you need to move your legs wider apart to accommodate that? And we're going to go up into a pelvic curl, tilting your hips, rolling up into a shoulder bridge. And when you reach the top, pause for a moment. Remember that you want to have the focus at the back of the legs, gluteals and hamstrings supporting you. And you get to ripple down through the spine. Find that little imprint into your lower back and release. And let's do a few more just like this. 
tilting hips, rolling up. Pause for a moment and bring your awareness to your upper body, your neck and your shoulders. Do you need to move your arms? And then ripple down through the spine. And just let your breath carry the movement. Coming all we're going to do just one more time. Little tilt of the hips. Rolling all the way up, finding that bridge position, softening into the back of the neck and release down. Soft movement and coming all the way to the bottom. And I want you to bring your right knee in towards your chest. Hold it there for a second and then stretch your left leg out along the floor. If you can straighten that left leg fully, then great. If there's a little bend, then that's absolutely fine as well. Move behind your thigh, flex your foot, and on your breath, let's go into a little bit of a hamstring release, stretching the leg up and bending the knee in. Keep moving with your exhale as you lengthen and inhale, soften the knee. Let's do three more. And by the way, if you need to put some kind of support underneath your head right now, do that. You might need just a little bit of release through the neck and shoulders that way. And we're going to take one more time. Exhale, stretch and release. Now just shake out both ankles and feet, but you're going to keep your legs as they are. And then bring your hands around to the top of the knee. So you're holding up the knee. Start rolling your right knee a little bit out towards the right. And then bring your knee up towards your armpit. So you can feel a little bit of a compression into the right hip. Now almost guaranteed, you're going to be rolling your shoulders and head to the right. Bring your head and your shoulders as centered as possible. Soften your breath, relax your abdominals, relax your feet, and just pause in here for a moment in this compression pose. And so this actually has a wonderful benefit for the digestive system. This is working on that large colon. Take a breath in. And then release, stretch your right leg all the way out and then just relax there. Bring your hands beside you with your palms up. Close your eyes for a moment. Just three breaths in and out. And just observe how the right side of your body feels right now after that release. And often in Pilates, we're engaging the abdominals, and right now, I want you to soften the abdominals. And when you're ready, open your eyes, bringing your left leg in towards you. Just hold it there for a moment. Slip your hands behind the left leg, flexing the ankle, and on your breath, extend. Feel and inhale, release. And again. Taking just a few more, getting that hamstring to lengthen. And you might notice that the one side is a little tighter than the other. So just find the stretch that works for you on the left leg. And release. Hold it there, relax your ankles and shake them out. And then stay as you are, move your hands to the top of the left knee. Get a nice firm grip so that you can open your left leg towards the left. Bring your knee up towards the left armpit and then see if you can get your head and your shoulders as level as possible on the ground. Soften your abs, relax your feet. And just allow yourself to breathe into the compression here. Taking one more breath in and out. And then slowly release, stretching that leg 
pull out, and then bring your hands beside you, palms up, close your eyes, and three easy breaths in and out. Just completely relaxing your body into the ground. Letting go of any unnecessary tensions. And then opening your eyes, just lengthen your legs out. You still have your legs on the floor, but you want to really find that you have a long, long I want you to pick up your right ankle and just cross it over the left ankle. So your legs are almost going like in a little crescent over to the one side. And then bringing both arms overhead, you're going to hold your left hand onto your right wrist and just let them settle. Now, if this doesn't feel good for your shoulders, then maybe put a pillow underneath that right arm and start pulling your right arm over. Let your shoulders and your head follow. So you're making a crescent moon shape or if you like pastries, maybe a little croissant. And then just settle there. See if you can get your shoulders and your bum cheeks even on the ground. And as you hold this crescent or this banana shape, you just breathe and open up the right side body. So oftentimes we do the standing and having your body completely supported by the ground is quite a lovely sensation because you can really soften and release into it. Let go of the tension. One more breath in and out. And then making your way back into a straight line, uncrossing the right leg. And I'll just switch over to the other side, cross the left ankle over, switch hands so that you're holding the left wrist and then start pulling yourself gently over towards the side. Make any adjustments you need. Prop yourself under the arms if you need that help for your shoulders. And then double check that you haven't twisted your body. In other words, do you have both your bum cheeks on the ground and do you have both shoulders on the ground? And then close your eyes and just soften and relax. Just letting your mat on the ground completely support you from underneath as you open up that left side body. Soften any tension or frown lines that you might have around your forehead, around your eyes. Last deep breath in and out. And then bringing yourself back into a straight line, taking your time, uncross that left leg, and now hug both knees up in towards your chest. You're going to tuck yourself into a tight little ball shape, just holding it there for a moment. And then relax any head and shoulders down. And I want you to cross your right thigh over your left thigh. Put your hands just on your knees. And if you have a stretch there already, you stay. Otherwise, start to slide your hands down towards your ankles. Coming into that piriformis release. Give yourself a block underneath your head if you need that little bit of support. And then just once again, breathing into it. Finding a little bit of a softening around the right deep hip. One more breath in and out. Take your time as you release your ankles and across your legs before you do the other side. Stay here for a moment. Tuck yourself once again into a tight little ball shape. Feeling the rounding around your upper back 
almost feeling that your kidneys are getting a little bit of a release into the floor below you. And relaxing head and shoulders down. And now left leg goes up and over, holding on to the knees. And then if you want to increase the stretch, remember that you slide your hands down a little bit lower. And then just observe on your own body, how does the left side feel in comparison to the right side that you just did? Is maybe one side a bit tighter or does it have a different sensation? And you don't have to try and change anything, you just want to be an observer for a moment. One more inhale, long, slow exhale, and then let go of your feet, uncross, bring both knees in towards you again. And now, you, if you've got a block underneath your head, please just remove it because we're going to do a little bit of a rolling over action and you're gonna bring your knees towards your head. Now guys, it's important that you don't turn your head to the side. Bring your head so that you're looking straight up to the ceiling above you. Put your hands on the floor beside you and then you're going to breathe out as you roll your knees over and then catch your hands onto your hips and your bum. So you're supporting yourself. You shouldn't feel like you're straining anything. Keep looking up. Very tempting to look to the side. And then move your hands into a position where it feels comfortable for you. And see if you can start to let your knees come down towards your forehead. Some people can very comfortably rest here. Other people have their legs a bit suspended. And you might notice that's quite um, difficult to breathe. There's a little bit of constriction around the throat. But just make sure that you stay with a gentle inhale and exhale. Stay here for just a few more moments. Notice on your own body where you might be feeling a little bit of tension, a little bit of a stretch. And then on your next breath, just rolling yourself down. And it doesn't matter if your head lifts up, it doesn't matter if you kind of roll down quickly, whatever works for you, bring your head all the way down and then placing your feet onto the ground. So walk your feet nice and wide so they're at the outer edges of your mat. Bring your hands out with your palms up and then just settle there for a moment and close your eyes. And after we came out of that rollover position, just notice how your spine is feeling. Notice how your neck is feeling. Perhaps observing where you feel an opening or a release right now that you've come back down into a neutral space. And then open your eyes and start rolling your knees gently from side to side. It doesn't matter which way you're going first. We're not going to be staying there. I just want you to find a little bit of a rotation through your spine. And as you take your knees from the right side and then over to the left side, again, just notice on your own body if you've got more range on one side. And we're just going to take one more time, stay on whichever side you are and hold it there. Turn your head to look over the opposite shoulder so that you brought your spine into a complete twist. And then just start to squeeze your bum cheeks a little bit. And as you squeeze your bum cheeks, can you feel that you get a little bit of an extra opening along the front of the hip, maybe coming down the thigh a little bit. Keep the abdominals gently connected. Stay as you are and relaxing your bum cheeks. And just notice if you're then able to go a little bit deeper. Don't force it, just let gravity do the work. 
And then bring your head and your legs back to the center. Pause and roll your legs to the other side. Hold it there. Turn your head and look over the opposite shoulder so you're in a complete twist. And then start to squeeze your bum cheeks. And as you do that little squeeze, notice how it increases the tensioning on the front of the hip. How does this side feel in comparison to your first side? And then relax the bum cheeks and just notice if you're able to go slightly deeper into that twist. And then on your breath, come all the way back to the center. Now keep your legs wide, keep your arms open and let's go up into our pelvic curl again. Start tilting your hips. Rolling up into a bridge position, holding it there. Make sure that your feet are grounding. Relax the back of your neck, get a little bit of a squeeze into the bum, and then ripple down through the spine, finding a little imprint, and release. If you need to adjust your leg position, feel free to do so. Take a breath in. Exhale, tilting hips. Rolling up, lovely squeeze in the bum cheeks. Now stay here. Start to push your hips up a little bit higher. And you start to get a little bit of work into the lower back. Check in with yourself that it feels okay. Relax the back of the neck and roll down through the spine. Nice, easy breath as you travel all the way down onto your mat. One more time, and we go. A little tilt of the hips. Just come up into our gentle bridge position first. Start lifting your hips up a little bit higher, feeling a little bit of workload into the lower back. And then, if it feels okay for you, Start lifting your chest, your heart towards your chin. So you're actually gonna come into a little bit of thoracic extension now. Take a breath in, and then start to roll through the spine, placing each vertebra in the upper back, placing each vertebra in the lower back, and then relax at the bottom. Bringing one knee towards your chest, bringing other knee in to join it, rocking your hips just a little bit from side to side. And then come all the way back to the center. Slip your hands behind your knees. We're going to do our slow, controlled rolling like a ball. Bringing your thighs away from your chest until your elbows are straight. Knock your chin around your spine and start pouring your body weight towards your feet and allowing yourself to lightly touch your feet to the ground and then bring your forehead all the way to your knees. And now reverse it. Start leaning backwards, go to a place where you can get your elbows straight and then just float your heels up and start pouring your body weight towards your head. Lie flat and let your knees come in towards your chest. And we go again. Reach the thighs away, lift your head and shoulders, and we breathe. Good, nice, nice, nice. And bringing head towards knees, rolling all the way back. Allowing your feet to float up. So there's no jarring movement here. There's no uncontrolled momentum. What? Bringing your legs away. And exhale. Pour your body weight forward. And round it over. And then roll up into a sitting position. And then just move back on your mat a little bit. You're going to separate your legs just about to the width of your mat and bend your knees if your hamstrings are tight. You need to be able to lift your toes up, get the flesh of your bum out the back, and put your hands on the outsides of your legs with your elbows straight. 
Imagine a wall supporting you behind your spine. So you're going to take a breath in. On your exhale, just let your head come away from the wall. Then rounding your upper back. So you're going to feel your fingertips sliding down the outside of your legs. Feeling your lumbar spine roll forward. And then if you're super duper flexible, you might be able to feel your hips, your pelvis roll forward as well. Take a little breath in. And then exhale, roll yourself back up. And then lifting up nice and tall. Good, we're going to repeat that. So you're going to nod your chin, and it's about articulating through the spine. Finding the curve of the back. Noticing how far your body wants to go today. Take a little breath. And exhale, rolling yourself back up. And lifting up nice and tall. Now we're going to do a little add-on. And we're going to nod the chin. Rounding through the spine. And then wherever you end up, you stay. You hold onto your ankles, your shins, your feet, whatever you can with your hands. And then start lifting your eye line, lifting your heart, reaching your tailbone out. And you are lengthening your spine, but you're actually leaning forward. Hold there. Let your arms help you as you open the chest, roll the shoulders back, and then round your spine over again. Reach your hands forward and roll back up against that wall. And coming upright, sitting up nice and straight. And we go again. Nod the chin. Finding the articulation of the spine. Taking a firm grip with your hands. Lengthen the spine. Reaching through the crown, reaching through the tail. And then round the spine. Let go with your hands. Roll yourself back up. And lifting nice and tall. We're going to add on. Nod your chin. Feeling how the scapula glide wide as you round the spine forward. Now lengthen your spine and feeling how the scapula gently draw down your spine. Now hold on with the left hand and just bring the right hand about the second toe, the palm facing in. Are you still lengthening? Can you lift the arm up a little bit and bring it down? Maybe you can take it a little higher. Maybe not. Doesn't matter. Figure out where your body needs to go. And hold, placing that right hand down. Lengthen the spine. Left hand above the second toe, palm facing in. Lift and down. Can you go big? Do you need to keep it small on the side? Lengthen through the crown. Hold it. Hold both hands to the ankles. Round your spine over, release those back muscles, stretch the arms and roll yourself all the way back up. And relax, nicely done. You're going to bend your legs to the side. So you can bring your right shin to the um, side, bend the left leg in front of you, and then place your hands up at the top of your thigh bones, just where they run into the pelvis. And let's do that little rolling action. So you've got one hip going into internal rotation, one hip doing external rotation. And then say to yourself as best you can on both your bum cheeks, and you're going to take your hands from side to side as we move into our seaweed. Opening up along the side of the body. Last two. Last one. And come back to the center. Swing your feet up and around to the other side. Finding that same figure of four seat or the deer pose. Slide your hands up your thigh bones until they get to the pelvis. And we do our little rolling in. 
and are rolling out. Internal rotation, external rotation. And just notice again on your own body how the one side feels in comparison to the other. And this is one of the big things that as we get older, it's so important that we maintain healthy hips. And then setting yourself to try and get both sit bones to the ground, but don't force it. And then let's go into our seaweed. Side to side. Oh, that feels so good on the one side. Last two. Last one. And come back to the center. Simply bring your both legs behind you so you can come up to all fours. So we're gonna start off with a very simple cat stretch that everyone knows. But I'm going to teach you a little variation today. So get yourself set up in a comfortable position and then start curling your spine, pressing away from your hand, and then lengthening tailbone up, heart up, and eye line lifts. And again. Now again, you don't have to do it at the same pace that I am. You're welcome to Close your eyes if you want to tune in to how this feels. And we're going to take just one more time. Come back just to a neutral position and pause here. Tuck your toes under, nice long spine, and then just see if you can lift your knees up. And we're finding the stability around all the major joints of the body. Please make any adjustments that you need for your wrists and for your hands. Energy through your crown, energy through your tail. Take a little breath. And then exhale, lower the knees. Release the feet back. Now start moving your hips backwards if you've got any knee issues, put a little pad behind the knees and start walking your hands all the way back. And then I just want you to see if you can sit upright. So your feet are relaxed out behind you. Now listen, for some people, you're already getting a little bit of an ankle stretch. If you want to take it further, bring your hands behind you and you can actually lift your knees off the ground. It stretches the front of the ankles. No faces allowed. <laughs> so just, guys, you don't have to force it. If you're already getting a straight show, then don't come back here. That's absolutely fine. Getting a front ankle stretch, and then lower the knees down, and then start to walk yourself all the way back and returning onto all fours. So now, the little cat stretch variation is a circling action of the spine. So imagine that you have a piece of chalk on your tailbone and you're going to start to draw circles with your tail behind you. So start small and notice how that circling action starts to travel through the pelvis and the lumbar spine and then start to add your rib cage to the movement. So you're going to feel that there's a natural ripple effect all the way up through your spine. And then if your neck and shoulders feel okay, you can start to add the head to the movement. You still feel the lift of the belly. You still feel the mobility through the spine, keeping hands and knees connected. And then when you're ready, change direction and go the other way. So this is a variation of the cat stretch. And there was one of my students years ago, in one of her assignments, she called it the stripper cat. And I was just like, that's so right. <laughs> so now start to make it a little bit smaller. And see if you can 
can now start to keep your head and your rib cage still. And just allow the movement to come into the lumbar spine and into the pelvis. And then allow yourself to come to a standstill. Walk your hands a little bit forward. So now what you're going to feel is a little bit of a connection into the latissimus dorsi here. With a straight spine, start shifting forwards and shifting backwards. And again, shifting forwards and back. Taking three more and back. Now on this last one, shift back so that your hips are stacked above your knees. Your hands are still going to be forward. Take your right leg, extend it behind you, and then keeping your pelvis and shoulders level, pick up the back leg. Now flex that foot. You're going to keep that leg still, and now start shifting forward and backwards, keeping the right leg extended. And back. Notice how when you shift forward that you feel much more work around the lower abs. And when you shift backwards, you feel the workload around the shoulder girdle. Last one. Now hold it. You might have stacked above your knee. And now all we're going to do is bend the top knee, but don't let the thigh bone drop. And then extend the top knee. Everything else is staying stable. Bend and extend. And two more. And extend. One more. And extend. Point your toe. Bring your knee in. And then just open your knees wide. Big toes together. Walk your hands back and just settle back for a moment into a resting position. Close your eyes. Take all the weight off your wrists and hands. And then just slow your breathing down. One more breath in and out. And then walk your hands a little bit forward. Pull yourself up onto all fours. Once again, sit your knees up underneath your hips and walk your hands just a little bit forward. Stretch the left leg back. Lift up the back leg. Hold it there. Flex the foot. Double check that your shoulders and pelvis are level. And then let's start experiencing the shifting forwards and backwards. Noticing the loading over the shoulder girdle and then over the pelvic girdle. Abdominals connected. Last two. And one more time. Bring yourself back until you've got your hips stacked above your knee. And then we bend and extend. Good. If you've got any knee issues, you might have to keep it quite a small range of movement. Make sure that there's no arching in your lower back as you bend the knee. You really have to keep those lower abs connected. Last one. And hold. Point your toes. Bring the knee in and once again, open your knees, sit back and coming into a resting position. Taking all the weight off your hands, maybe wiggle out your fingers, make a little fist, whatever feels best for your wrists. And once again, slow your breath down.
And on your next breath, bring yourself onto all fours. Now we're going to be lying flat on our stomachs in a second. So you might have to come a little bit forward. Extending one leg back, placing the toes on the ground. Press into the hands, firm abs, and extend the other leg back and you hold. Just let your knees hinge to the floor. Relax your feet out. Firm up your abs and do a slow push up to go all the way down. Keep the elbows tucked in nice and tight. And then stay on your stomach. Fold the shoulders back and come up into a little baby cobra and release it down. And again, little baby cobra and release it down. One more time, little baby cobra, now hold it there. Let your left hand hover off the ground. Reach the left hand forward Put that hand down and lower your head and shoulders. Roll over onto your left side, pushing with your right hand so that you can cradle your head with that arm. Move the fingers down a little bit. Glue the legs together. We're about to go into sideline obliques. Breathe out as both legs come up. And lower. And little lift. And lower. So you're going to feel a shortening along the top waist here. This is a lateral flexion of the spine. If you're feeling it mostly in the lower back, then maybe what you need to do is roll the top hip bone back just a little bit. So you move the focus into the obliques. One more. And lift, hold it. Now keep the legs lifted. Lower the bottom leg and lift it up. Lower the bottom leg and squeeze. Good. So you're keeping tension on the obliques and it's giving you a chance to isolate the inner thigh on the left leg. Last two. Last one. Squeeze and hold it. Lower both your legs to the ground, moving your right hand up a little higher and putting the palm flat. Stretch the left arm out and roll onto your stomach. Keep that left arm out. You're going to come up into a little baby cobra. Hover that left arm. Bring it in. And placing both hands flat, Lower the chest down. And we go, baby cobra. Roll the shoulders back, stop. Now hover the right arm, reach that arm forward, and placing the hand down. And then from here, lower head and shoulders, push yourself to roll onto your right side, and you can bend that right arm underneath you, move the left hand down, nice long, long line of the body, and now both legs lift up and release. And again. And release. Focusing on obliques. If you're feeling it in the lower back, then just roll the hip back very slightly to highlight the front. Keep reaching energy through your feet, energy through your crown. One more. Lift up and hold it. And now the bottom leg goes down and up. Down and up. Keep the tension on the top side of your body to support that left leg in the air. And then Focus on the right inner thigh, doing its job. Last two. Last one. Hold it. And then lower both legs down. Move your left hand up a little bit, put the palm flat. Stretch the right arm out and roll onto your stomach. 
Come up into a little baby cobra. Lifting that right arm, bend it in, placing the hands down, and lower the chest all the way down. And now from here, you're going to push up onto your hands and knees. One strong movement. Up you come. And then bringing the knees underneath you, and you're back in a four point kneeling position. Reach the left arm out to the side, coming into a thread the needle. And then decide what you're going to do with the right hand. So always quite lovely to come into a little bit of a passive twist or rotation after an extension of the spine. And then bringing that right hand to the floor, all the way up you come, extending the left arm out and bringing the hand underneath you. Right hand reaches and thread the needle. Coming into a gentle twist and then deciding what you're going to do with that left arm. Making sure that you can still breathe. And then bringing that left hand in, up you come, stretching the arm out and bringing the hand back underneath you. So spread your fingers out, tuck your toes under. We're about to go into a downward facing dog. So hover your knees first and then move your hips back. Send your hips up and let's go into that little hamstring, calf release, pedaling the heels. And then push both heels down. Give yourself an opportunity to just breathe and stretch there for a moment. And now make any adjustments that you need to your position so that you feel very stable. And just pick up your right leg and bringing your leg just to the height of your hip. It doesn't have to go any higher than that. And then point your toe. And now Open your right hip up towards the ceiling and see if you can lift your leg even higher. So you might almost feel like you're doing a beautiful split. And then bring that leg all the way down and placing toes to the floor. Make any adjustments you need. Pick up your left leg, it's not very high to start. Hold it there. Point your toe and then start opening the left hip up towards the sky and then reach up through that foot. And bringing your leg all the way back down. Stay for a moment here. Take a little breath in. And then exhale. Bend the knees and start walking your feet all the way forward towards your hands. So you can go onto the tips of your fingers at any point if you need. Lining up your toes with each other and just hang there. Put one hand on the opposite elbow, other hand on the opposite elbow, and just allow yourself to dangle. Do any swaying action that you need. And then releasing your hands, soften your knees, and start rolling yourself up to come upright into a standing position and just allowing yourself to lift all the way up and tall. Rolling the shoulders back and around. And placing your hands onto the shelf of your hip, you're going to turn your feet out and take quite a wide step out to the side. So my toes are pointing out like this, quite wide. And from here, I just want you to practice bending your knees and coming back up. Add a little bend of the knees and coming up. And we're going to do two more and release one more time. Bye, one on one, angels. <laughs> now, we're going to do a deep squat. A lot of people's knees don't like this. So I'm going to tell you to stop whenever you need. Or what some people do is they literally put blocks underneath your bum to sit. So do a little bend with the knees and then bring your hands together in a prayer position 
and then reach down, put one elbow on the inside of one knee, other elbow on the inside of the other knee. You might have to lift your heels, but you're gonna see if you can come all the way down into a deep squat. Keep pressing your knees open gently, lengthening up through the crown of your head. And then just let your body weight come forward so you can put your hands to the ground. And then you are gonna take the weight and the pressure off your um, elbow. The knees are, <laughs> so the knees are on the elbows right now. That's it. And you're going to see if you can just shift to one side, move your hand back, shift to the other side, move your hand back, and lower your bum down. So it's all part of keeping that mobility and range through the hips. That's it. That's it. And move hands behind you and lower yourself down gently. <laughs> All right, so we're back to where we started in the seated position. Hands are out in front, lengthen up through the crown. Exhale, start curling halfway back. Hold it here for a moment, take a little breath. And exhale forward and lift up tall. And when we started this movement at the beginning of class, you were holding on to your knees. You're welcome to do that again. But remember that we had our attention on our feet grounding us. So bring your same awareness to that. Take a breath. And we're going to do one more time, curling halfway back. And then roll forward and lift up tall. Hands to knees. Now bring your knees and feet together. So you might find it pinches in the hips a bit, in which case you just move your hips back a little bit. Bring your hands together. You're going to put both hands just on the right side and you're going to open your arm. And release. Move your hands to the left side and open the left arm. And release. Hands to the right side, and so one arm is connected to the leg, the other arm is opening, and center. Now stay there and bring your hands to the middle, palms touching, grow nice and tall. Exhale, roll halfway back, legs together. Now bring your hands to the right side, and we open. And over to the left side. And the right. One more time left. And come center, hold it, roll forward, and lift up nice and tall. Separate the hands, separate the knees and feet. Take a breath in. Exhale, go all the way down onto your backs. Let your hands relax beside you, and then bringing your feet just a little bit closer in towards your bum. I want you to let your knees open to the sides, place the bottoms of your feet together, the soles of your feet together to touch, and then bring your hands onto the sides of your ribs. So one hand on the right side, left hand on the left side, and just allow your elbows and your shoulders to completely soften and relax. And then take a moment here to close your eyes. And let your breathing slow down. And just allow your body to soften and release into the floor below you.
Bring your awareness to your ribs moving underneath your hands. And just taking one more breath in and out here. Allow your eyes to open. And bringing both arms out to the side with your palms facing upwards. Roll your left knee up and over to rest on top of your right knee. And let your left shoulder lift up as much as it needs to so that you can connect your legs in a comfortable position. It doesn't matter if your shoulder is lifting. It's more important that your lower back feels supported. Turn your head to look over that left shoulder, feeling a stretch along the left front arm line, maybe up into the chest. And then on your next breath, allowing the left knee to come up and you're gonna feel immediately that you can let the left shoulder relax down again and come back to that butterfly position in the middle. And then bringing the right knee up and over, looking over the right shoulder. And again, as you bring the knees together, you might feel that the shoulder has to lift depending on how flexible it feels. Bring your awareness to your lower back. Just checking that it feels okay. And if not, what do you need to do to find support for your lumbar spine? Opening up that right front arm line. And then lifting the right knee out and back, letting the right shoulder settle down, come back to that reclined butterfly just for a moment. And then bringing both knees all the way up. You can separate the feet, just make sure that your feet are grounded, maybe wiggle out your spine. Bring your hands up and give yourself a giant hug. So you're going to bring your arms all the way around and see if you can almost walk your fingers right underneath yourself. And then do a gentle rocking action with the ribs from side to side. Just finding a little bit of a stretch and a release between the shoulder blades. And then settle, releasing the hug. Open your arms all the way out again. And then bringing the arms up, and this time put the other arm above. So you switch sides. And again, just walk your fingers underneath yourself, give yourself a little hug. And then once again, it's a little bit of a rocking action. And settle yourself, release your hug, bringing your hands just up towards the sky. Hug one knee to your chest. Hug the other knee to your chest, and once again, just rocking a little bit. So now we're gonna go into our rolling exercise. So slip your hands behind your knees, lift your head and shoulders and round in your spine into that ball shape. And now using the momentum of your legs, rolling on your spine, and then at the point where you feel that you don't need to use your feet anymore, you can just keep your feet nice and close. Make sure at no point that you touch your head to the ground. Keep your chin tucked in to protect your neck. Last one. Come up and balance. And placing your feet all the way down. Good. So just move back into the same position that we started. Overlapping one arm on top of the other. Making a little space for your forehead to rest. Making any adjustments to your position that you need. And 
And just once again, let your breathing slow down. Notice your breath travel along your spine and through your body. Taking a moment to feel your physical body, to feel your energetic body. And do they resonate with each other? Maybe yes, maybe no, just simply observe. Giving yourself just a few more moments to let your body and your mind find some stillness. Taking one more deep breath in through the nose. Open your mouth and sigh. Take your time as you unravel your spine, lifting all the way up and tall. Hands just down beside you with your palms up, and we inhale, reach up, connecting the tips of the fingers to each other, and exhale, open up nice and wide, and roll the shoulders back and around. Are you good? Yeah. Fantastic. Good. So just 